hello friends this is Bidhan welcome you to my channel today we will not solve any problem of CSI net but we will see the canonical transformation concept so for that we have taken a Hamiltonian which is a function of Q and P Q and P are called canonical phase space variables Q is specially called generalized coordinate P is called the generalized momentum P is also called the conjugate momentum we know that canonical transformation is something that Q goes to capital Q and P transforms to capital P that is canonical transformation but today we will know that there is a condition for that two transformations to be canonical transformation and the condition is the equations of motion before the transformation and after the transformation the form of the equations of motion should be invariant so first of all therefore we see the Hamilton's equations of motion in one dimension now using this Hamiltonian H function of QP we have the Hamilton's equations of motion Q is equals to del H by del P and P dot equal to minus del H by del Q these two equations are called Hamilton's equations of motion in one dimension or they are called Hamilton's canonical equations of motion also not or also okay and where this Hamiltonian is this Hamiltonian in this regard I will tell you something that in early videos where we solved the problems on Hamiltonian we had written h is equals to p q dot minus l in one dimension what was this h called this was called Hamiltonian so we called this h as Hamiltonian now let me ask you one thing is this the Hamiltonian's equations of motion Hamiltonian's equation of motion no this is not the Hamiltonian of equation of motion this we call Hamiltonian and actually this H is Hamiltonian function this L is the Lagrangian function and this is the Hamiltonian function in terms of Lagrangian function so this is not of our use but we have looked at it for sake of knowledge so these are the Hamilton's equations of motion now we go to that canonical transformations are this, this Q transforms into capital Q and momentum transforms into a transformed momentum capital P these are just the notations of capital Q is the notation for transformed coordinate and this is the notation for transformed momentum now we can have a Hamiltonian H dash that is a function of transformed coordinate and transformed momentum or the conjugate momentum transformed conjugate momentum this now in this condition let me tell you that these two transformations will be called canonical transformations if if we can write using this h dash new Hamiltonian or the transformed Hamiltonian which is a function of transformed coordinate and transformed momentum the equations of Hamilton's equations of motion as q dot is equals to del h dash by del capital P and capital P dot is equals to minus del h dash 
by del capital Q okay so these two transformations can be called Hamilton canonical transformation only if before the transformation using the Hamiltonian the form of the equation look at it and after the Hamiltonian has got transformed after the canonical transformation the transformed Hamilton we have got and using that if in terms of this Q dot and Q dot we could write this that means if the form of the equations do not change form of the equations remain invariant after the transformation then these two transformations can be called canonical transformation now this this could also be shown as QP transforms to capital Q capital P either this way we could show this canonical transformation or this way but one thing is must this condition of form invariance of equation must be satisfied now we see one more thing that is we know the Lagrangian that is let's say it's Lagrangian is a always we know Lagrangian is always a function of Q and Q dot position and velocity now we know the Lagrange's equation of motion is del by del t del l by del q dot minus del l by del q is equal to 0 okay del l by del q this is it now let us suppose that this from here this capital Q is transformed or it gets transformed to capital small q gets transformed to capital Q and Q dot transforms to capital Q dot then we could have a new Lagrangian that is a function of capital Q and capital dot then we could say that these two transformations are canonical if canonical transformations if before the transformation this is the form of Lagrangian and after the transformation using this Lagrangian we could write del by del t of del l dash by del capital Q dot minus del l dash by del capital Q is equal to 0 so look at this that this things could be told as canonical transformations if the equations of motions are form invariant obviously l and l dash are different equations are different but the form of the equations are not different then these are can be called the transformations canonical transformation now the different kind of uh, notation we could have for transformation is q q dot transforms to capital Q capital Q dot now this could also be written as this now I would describe two things about the canonical transformations or the two important concepts relating to canonical transformations number one is that the poison bracket of two functions x and y with respect to q and p is same as the poison bracket of x and y with respect to capital q and capital p if they are this q p has canonically transformed to capital q capital p so one thing that uh, this is the sign of poison bracket you have also seen that this is also a sign of poison bracket so it doesn't matter that whether you use this curly bracket or this square bracket it doesn't matter now this is one and that is why the first uh, the first concept is told as that uh, poisons bracket remain invariant poison bracket remain invariant under canonical transformations this is the concept behind it 
and the second is second is that phase space volume remains invariant that means doesn't change under canonical transformation now this concept is also known as Liouville's theorem this is famous Liouville's theorem so we have two theorems regarding canonical transformation one is that the poison bracket remains invariant under canonical transformation that means this is the poison bracket of qp and this is the poison bracket of capital q capital p they are same if this qp actually the canonical transformation that qp got canonically transformed into capital q capital p then they are same and the second is Liouville's theorem. Liouville's theorem says that under canonical transformation, phase space volume remains invariant. So this was all about canonical transformation. Thank you.